One of the biggest worries in South Florida, you know, windstorm insurance. And the South Florida state rep who is involved in some of those recent changes and also just back from the border. Representative Tom Fabricio, Republican from Miami Lakes, right here at the table with us. So good to have you back. Thank you for having me. Going on. So I want to start with property insurance. Sure. Um, you've been in the thick of changes for the last couple of years, and this week you had town halls, a couple of them this week, right with homeowners um, and with citizen CEO Tom Serio. I would love to hear what you heard from homeowners in well, those town halls. Uh, thank you, Glenna. So yeah, uh, the homeowners insurance issue, property insurance in Florida, and actually in the country, is one of the biggest problems that we're, we've been all having. And uh, back in, in December of 22, we made some major legislative changes uh, to the way that the laws affect homeowners insurance. We had a major crisis uh, back between 22 and 23. We lost somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 insurance carriers. Mm -hmm. And at that point, citizens blew up from close to 400,000 policies to close to 1.4 million policies which, at, at its height. So the reason that we brought in Tim Ciro to the community in town of Miami Lakes and in city of Hialeah was that for constituents to come in and be able to ask him questions directly, the CEO of Citizens, and talk about their problems. And we heard some interesting problems and we heard some commitments from citizens to really work out some of those glitches that have happened in the past. So the, the, the changes that you're talking about, we, we report on them all the time here. You know, you've been here talking about them. And the 18 to 24 month window that we heard that the market would begin to stabilize and people would be, be able to see changes. We're, we're kind of coming up on that. We hear so many stories every day. We are in hurricane season right now. People are hurting. And I, and I wanted to hear from you, the, these actual changes have been the biggest criticism market driven. They were for the market to stabilize the market with the, the feeling being that the market stabilized and competition would come back and costs would be lower. There are so many people, Rep Fabricio, who are not seeing that as we go into hurricane season. And so is, is there a structural change that you see that needs to be made as these changes are still going, I mean, there are people who are saying this market needs to be blown up and redone. Right, I understand. One of the things that I'll point out is that the rate filings this year, and remember rate filings are ahead of renewals. So renewals that occur after the rate filings have gone through and they've been approved, uh, then consumers will see that actually in their escrow or their, their insurance premium payments. But rate filings this year, we've seen 18 to 19 carriers either request a zero premium increase or a premium decrease. So the fact that we went from a situation where we had 14 carriers leave the state of Florida because they were insolvent to eight to nine carriers come into Florida and 18 to 19 carriers uh, request a premium increase or I'm sorry, pre a zero premium increase or premium decrease, that's huge. And that's indicative of the fact that the changes that we made are bearing fruit now. All right, so on face value, that is a great headline, really good news. Digging into it a little bit, the run-up of property uh, insurance premiums, uh, to your point, I guess it's been from 2017, 18, but really since COVID, the run-up of those premiums, some people are looking at 8,000, 9,000, double-digit thousand premiums. So no rate increases while great news is still a difficult uh, road to hoe for a lot of homeowners who are struggling right now. Right, well, we have to keep in mind that during that time and the legislative changes came in in December of 22. So it has, the changes didn't start back in 17. The, the crisis began back then, I would, I would suggest. However, one of the things that we need to consider is that during, since COVID to now, property values have doubled in many cases. And homeowners insurance is tied in many ways to your property values. Also, we're seeing national inflation numbers that are you know, incredible. And so the cost to repair, the rebuild homes, all of those things are tied in many ways to the inflation cost, to the number, they're definitely tied to the value of your home. Yeah. So if your home went up, if your home doubled in value, which a lot of folks have had, been blessed to have that situation, their insurance also goes up, unfortunately. So the, aside from the, there are new companies that have come into the market, uh, I, I think eight in the past, since we looked last, so in the past right. year or it's so. Eight, eight. Eight, eight new carriers came in and one, one dramatically expanded its presence. So that's why we say eight and a half. All right, and then there are some that have, have gone, that's they right. left. 
And the reason that insurance companies across the board cite for either writing uh, very expensive policies or not writing them at all and leaving, the number one thing that they cite is the risk. And you're not going to mitigate the risk of hurricanes in Florida. That, that never goes away, right? And in fact, if you listen to the climate experts, can only get exponentially worse. So it, going forward, next legislative session, it, is there an eye toward fixing that kind of structure so that a, a, a business that is profit-centered, everyone deserves to make profits, but a profit-centered market was, is not the middle, is not the one that carries the risk. Right, no, you make a very good point. There are certain factors in determining what the premium is for, a, for homeowner's insurance. And one of those factors definitely is risk due to weather. That's unequivocal. One of the factors has to do with, like we mentioned, uh, cost of rebuilding a home, cost of construction. Uh, property value is another factor. And I, we don't get to move the levers a lot on those issues. However, one of the factors that, we, that was occurring here in Florida uh, as compared to the rest of the country is that we had close to 80% of the homeowner's insurance litigation in the entire country here in Florida, yet we only had approximately 8% of the claims. I remember. And that, and so, that is one of the, the right. laws that you passed is to bring the litigation. Right. And, and, but we were grossly out of whack nationally on the litigation numbers. And since we've made those changes, other states that have had similar problems like Georgia and Hawaii are looking to do some of the things that we've done here in Florida. You know, we're going to talk more about homeowners insurance with Jeff Brandis, who is in our next segment, but uh, you're, you're involved in a lot of things. So before yeah. I let you go, I wanted to talk about your trip to Eagle Pass. You are, you are with the Florida State Guard. But uh, recently, was it last week or the week before, you were in Eagle Pass with a contingent of your colleagues from the state legislature looking at how Florida spends money at the border. And there is a lot of criticism about the amount of Florida's budget going toward border issues like border protection, also transporting migrants to other states. What did you see? Well, we saw that the dollars that are, been, that are being spent by the Florida uh, the Florida government are very valuable. We need to make sure that we have, that we can, and we continue to help in whatever way possible the efforts that have been going on at the border because of what's been going on. Well, what are what are Florida's guards doing at the border? Florida State Guard members, uh, there there have been uh, a contingent of 30, and then I believe another 30, and there's been other smaller contingents of folks that have been out there. They've been they assisting the state of Texas with deploying the sea wire at the border and with making sure that the fortifications at the border on Rio Grande have been in place. Literal uh, border security. Literally. They've also, uh, there's also Florida National Guard is out there. We also have Florida uh, FDLE is out there. Fish and Wildlife has been out there. Um, there's been several agencies out there. I'm sure I missed one and I apologize to the agency I missed. And, and I hear people listening to this and asking themselves, Florida what's, Highway Patrol. what's not being done in Florida with all of those Florida resources at the border? Well, the reason that why we need to have those resources out there and we've had them out there is because a lot of the human trafficking and a lot of drug trafficking comes through the panhandle on the I-10 corridor. And a lot of the human trafficking ends up in South Florida. So by being able to uh, shore up that border, protect the border, and stop the illegal migrant transfer in, the human trafficking, which is, by the way, I saw it with my own eyes. Uh, families coming across with little children over the border when they can stay and wait and file paperwork and come in legally. But bringing children across, literally across the river, critically, like horribly dangerous and sad to see. Um, a lot of those folks are coming across and ending up in South Florida. And they'll tell you they're go they want to end up in Miami. So right. we need to make sure we need to shore up. The national policy needs to be improved. The federal executive order that was recently put in place is not enough. I mean, it's going to let a, mil a million a year come in illegally. We, we actually have a segment on that later in the program as well. Representative Tom Fabricio, great to have you here. As always, appreciate your time. Thank you, Glenna.